many, many, many moons ago. There was a story told that has an Indian version. But if we hear this story with the awareness that every character is an aspect of our self, our psyche, we can perhaps recognize that it embraces dimensionality, duality, and connectivity. In other words, the three levels of existence, the inward and the outer, and that which is present when we get it together. It's a story about uh, Brahmin, one of those from the Hindu priestly caste, but he was born into abject poverty. But after some time, being tired of the grinding need just to find something to fill his belly, he decided to set out in the world. And so he took with him a few crusts of stale bread and a flask of water, and he set out on the long, dusty road he did not know to where. But of course the days were very hot and dusty, and he grew tired and thirsty and hungry. So he came upon a very large tree on the side of the road and decided to sit down under the tree to rest and perhaps gnaw on one of his crusts. But uh, as he was sitting under the tree and of course uh, needing to go to a pond nearby to wash his mouth, which was one of the rituals required before eating, a booming voice said, don't. So he looked around to see where the voice was coming from, but not seeing anyone in the vicinity, he got up and went to the pond and rinsed his face and his mouth and came back. And just as he was about to put the crust into his mouth, the booming voice said again, don't. But, of course, he looked around again, not seeing any sign of anyone, and ate his crusts anyway. Uh, but then, uh, after eating, he found that he needed to defecate, and he was about to do so before departing, when again the booming voice said, Don't! And, uh, the Brahmin, somewhat exasperated now, looked around. Who, who, who are you and what are you wanting to speak to me for? And uh, the voice said, look up and you will see me. So when the Brahmin looked up into the tree there, he saw, uh, to all intents and purposes, what appeared to be a demon of some kind and uh, the demon said look at me look at me I too was a Brahmin like you but I was a famous and accomplished musician but I did not share any of my knowledge and so I doomed to the fate of being in this tree. And look behind you, you will see a little temple. And in that temple, there is a piper that plays incessantly off key. And he is killing me. Every note he plays is like a knife that goes into my entrails. I cannot stand it. My powers have gone. Help me, please. Won't you carry me to another grove of trees away from here? 
And the Brahmin uh, thought to himself, so you know, and his street smarts kind of kicked in and he looked up and he said, well, yes, I can do that, but what's in it for me? And the demon said, well, well, you know, just carry me over first and when my powers are renewed, we can talk about it. So the Brahmin took the demon on his shoulders and carried him over to another grove of trees and the demon with a great sigh of relief thanked him profusely and, uh, and then he said uh, well I can see that you are a very very poor man uh, so I can help you in repayment since now some of my power has been restored um, what I'll do is I'll go and enter the princess of the local realm here and you can come along and uh, exorcise me uh, but only on the condition that you do it only once uh, because if you try to do it again I'll finish you off, bedevil you for the rest of your life. So this is exactly what happened. The demon flew off and entered the princess of the realm and the Brahmin had to make his way to the big city in which the palace was and that was another journey altogether. But uh, when he got there he checked into a little guest house that was run by a little old lady there and he happened to ask her, you know, what was the local gossip around the place and she told him that, oh, you know, that the whole kingdom was in a state of despair because the princess had been taken over by a demon and nobody knew what to do about it. Oh, said so the, the Brahmin, no, I, I can help with that. So he took himself off to the palace and announced uh, to the guards that he was able to help to exorcise the demon from the princess. And although the king came out and saw this kind of obviously very impoverished uh, Brahmin there, he had his doubts but he was desperate so he took him in and uh, he was taken into the chamber of the princess. But of course the demon who had entered into her recognized him straight away and and the demon said, well, I thought you'd never get here, but uh, anyway, uh, you know, you say the word and, and, I, and I'll leave. But remember what I told you, you're only allowed to do it once. So in that instant, uh, the Brahmin used the word that the demon had given him and off flew the demon, of course, to the king and everyone else's great delight. So he was given a vast fortune very vast fortune. So he went off and bought himself rather a palatial residence and he was able to find himself a wife and he had children and was leading a very good life indeed. Oh, when it so happened that uh, the king of another realm nearby uh, had the same problem. His daughter had been taken over by a demon and was in dire straits having called everyone he could and to no avail and then heard that there was this Brahmin who had uh, exercised a demon in a neighboring uh, country. So of course word got out and a messenger was sent to the Brahmin to come and exercise the demon. But of course he remembered the threat of the demon and he was very loath to do it but of course if the king says you have to come you have to come so what could he do he had to answer the call so he traveled to the neighboring country but being loath to present himself in what he knew was a very fierce uh, demon he waited a week or two until finally he got up the courage knowing that this is something he had to do. So he went off to the palace and when he was taken into the chamber of the 
princess, the demon recognized him and said, What are you doing here? I told you that you're only allowed to exercise me once. And here you are again. Now I'm going to bedevil you for the rest of your days. Well, um, by now the Brahmin had uh, gathered some, not just his street smarts, but other smarts too, and in, in a way had become s somewhat wise, you might say. So even though there was great fear and trepidation there, uh, he kind of gathered himself together and all, all of a sudden there was inspiration. And so very calmly he said to the demon, well, uh, I know a certain piper in a temple that's not too far from here, so I'll give him a call so he can come over and share life with us. The demon said, no, oh no, no, please, no, I'm going. And off he went, never to be seen or heard of again. We know the end of the story, of course. The Brahmin was richly rewarded and lived a good life with his wife and family from uh, there on. Dimensionality, duality, and connectivity. How does this story encapsulate and embrace these? Looking to our selves. Dimensionality, duality, and connectivity. Where do they come together in us? And what do they bring, or what have they wrought for us? We know that when we bring the three dimensions of existence together, we're living in a state of such it and under, existence, knowledge and bliss coming together to bring what we could call a divine life. But then there's duality, the inward and the outward. What happens when it comes together with dimensionality to bring connectivity? Where are we when this occurs? What does this story tell us? <laughs>